In the molecular and nanoscale physics group, that's uh, abbreviated to NMP in uh, Leeds, um, we are a very multidisciplinary group. So we don't just concentrate on physics. In fact, my degree is actually in chemistry and then I'm a material scientist for, first and foremost. So we do a lot of collaborations with chemistry, with engineering, with biology. Uh, a lot of the work we do is basically at the nano scale and a lot of biological processes happen at that scale, which is why we have these collaborations. Uh, within that group, my research is based on Biometics is a term that I use, um, and basically it's a field where we try and mimic what nature does. The particular thing I'm interested in is nanomagnetism and nanomagnetic particles, and they actually exist in nature. And there's magnetic bacteria that take iron up from this environment, um, and they actually synthesize within them, almost like a little spine down their, down their cell, little nanomagnets. Um, and because of that, they actually swim towards a magnetic field. So you can see them all aligned in a magnetic field, and when you turn the magnet around, they all swim in that direction. They're beautiful things to look at. Uh, but what we're interested in is actually using these, because nature has this fantastic genetic control over the size and shape it makes things. So if you think about the bones in your ears, um, and even genetically, you can think about the differences. So our teeth look very similar to our parents. So there's a really fine control over the shapes and size of minerals that we produce. These bacteria make these minerals, and they're a very defined size and shape. Right down to the nanoscale, these things are only about 50 nanometers big. So what I'm interested in is trying to make these, like nature does, this really refined size and shape. When you've got these magnetic bacterium, I was really interested initially in trying to alter their magnetic properties when they're actually in the cell. So naively as a chemist, a material chemist, not a biologist at all, I thought I'd um, simply add some cobalt into the media as well as iron and hopefully they'd eat that cobalt. And cobalt is actually very interesting because when you add cobalt to the particular iron oxide these magnets are made of, it makes them more magnetically hard, which means that they have different applications for the future. So naively, as I said, I added cobalt and hoping they would take it up. And in a very small chemical window, they actually do take it up. Too much and obviously they die because it's toxic. Too little and there's no effect at all. But in this small window, they do actually take a bit up. So we did see that they do have this change in magnetic effect, uh, which was a, a huge uh, leap, really, because we've never seen this sort of thing happen in nature before, to being able to control nature like that. However, the downside of that is it was a very small amount of doping, because as I say, if you add too much, it's very toxic. So what we now do as a group is try to take this whole system outside the cell. So what happens in biology, there's a lot of processes go on that we really don't fully understand. It's very complicated. Whereas if we just take the mechanism we're interested in, which is the making of these nanoparticles, take that outside the cell, then we can just control the aspect more, and then we can maybe add dopants to a higher level and even change lots of different things about them. So what we've done is we've taken the protein that controls the size and shape, and we've added that to a chemical solution. So we're now trying to alter the size and shape using the protein and also then the chemical composition with different chemicals. Um, so we've done that with cobalt, we now do it with different sorts of metals, and then a further step from that is we're trying to bind these proteins to surfaces in, in patterns, so nanopatterned arrays, and then the particles will only form where the proteins are in patterns, and that has huge amounts of applications possibly for the future of information storage or even uh, biomedical applications like lab on a chip. So the eventual future goal is that we can maybe have a toolbox where someone can come to us and say, I would like a nanoparticle that's exactly 30 nanometers big, we want to have 10% cobalt, we want it to be long and thin, and I know which proteins to add and which chemicals to add, and we can give them exactly what we want. So really just treat the proteins as an additive, that's the, the goal.